Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Alia Quadri, otherwise known as Alia Umrayan, and I am the founder and CEO of registered charity Solace UK, who support women who have embraced Islam and find themselves in difficulty. Alhamdulillah, I live in East London with my family. By the permission and guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I became Muslim in 1999. My shahada story is a long one, and I share that story on my social media platforms. But just to summarize, my parents were going through quite a challenging time with one another, and that kind of produced challenges with my own mental well-being. And I ended up becoming very close friends with a practicing Muslima who was going through similar trials at home herself. And I noticed that she had a profound sense of peace. Um, she was able to navigate through that storm with faith, with reliance upon Allah, with a sense of knowing that this was a test, it was a trial, and it wasn't affecting her as much as it was affecting me. We became very, very close friends, and I had a great deal of love for her, and I wanted to save her from what I thought was a very backwards, a religion that would hold her back from succeeding in life, and so I began to look into Islam, and through looking into Islam to save her from this lifestyle, I ended up becoming convinced myself. I was extremely scared at the changes that were taking place both in my mind and my heart and eventually decided to cut off contact from this particular friend and put all, the, all of the books and cassettes aside but subhanallah the thoughts the changes in, in my thinking the feelings that I had caught up with me and I had to ask myself a question why am I not submitting to that which has already resided in my heart why am I not accepting the truth that I know to be the truth and so I took my shahada alhamdulillah taking my shahada I remember I was in a blue turquoise tie-dyed scarf and I took my shahada in my friend's sister's living room with her Greek convert husband present and it was a beautiful moment. It was an emotional moment. I remember being told I was like a newborn baby. My sheet was clean. Yeah, it was very, very special, alhamdulillah. I have to admit that I didn't tell my family in the best way. I think quite a few reverts, converts, you know, at the beginning of our journey, we're very passionate, we're full of zeal. We want to do what's right by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, we throw ourselves into seeking knowledge, into practicing, you know, this new way of life and this new religion. The way that I told my mum was actually knocking on the front door dressed in hijab. Not the best way, not the best way of telling my mum. Um, what was the response? My mum thought it was a, a phase to begin with. My father, who was you know, divorced from my mother at the time, he said, why are you adopting the religion of Asians and Arabs? Him being a West African man, I, I thought that to be quite interesting because obviously Islam settled in Africa, you know, many, many years ago. Um, he didn't approve. He didn't like the fact that I, you know, was covering. My mother was married to her second husband at the time of my embracing Islam and he had a, a real hatred for, for Islam and very sadly eventually brainwashed my mother into emotionally abusing me uh, at the time of taking my shahada to the point that she looked me in the eyes at the age of 17 and said, I'm no longer your mother, I've done my job, you're on your own. I was 17 years old and I had to fend for myself at that age. And that was very, very challenging, that was quite hard. When I look back at the very early years of being a Muslim, the challenges that I experienced were connected to my family, connected to loneliness, connected to throwing myself into the deep end, or rather being encouraged to 
to practice Islam, to become this ideal Muslim overnight. I, f I wasn't in the best of hands as a very new Muslim, as a very young new Muslim. And so I kind of went through emotional struggle, isolation, loneliness, financial difficulty, having to fend for myself and find a job at a young age, falling into the wrong type of community, confusion. I kind of went through it all in the first few years. Of, of being a Muslim. And I think now, having been a Muslim coming up to 24 years, alhamdulillah, my struggles are different. Um, they're not as they used to be when I was a very new Muslim. I think, and maybe this is the case for, for, for all Muslims, for all Muslim women, it's just ensuring that I journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as myself. And I think, you know, I, obviously I've been a Muslim for a very long time. So it's no longer the case where I'm trying to find myself. I believe I know who I am now. But there are times where I have to ensure that I'm worshipping Allah as me. And that me includes the me before I became Muslim, the me who went through the journey, the very early journey of embracing Islam and the me that I am today. And that becomes more apparent to me when I'm with my non-Muslim family or when you know certain dates pop up during the year. Um, I'm reminded that yes, you know, I, I wasn't born into Islam and there is a side of me that, there is a side of me that requires patience that requires understanding that requires a level of compassion as I journey through relationships with non-Muslim family and as I said dates throughout the year which trigger different reactions from non-Muslim family. One thing that I wish the community knew about reverts is that whilst it's wonderful and fantastic that you know scores of men and women are embracing Islam, the journey doesn't end at the Shahada. The journey, in fact, begins at the time of the Shahada. That's when the support is needed from the community. That's when, you know, a new Muslim will encounter difficulties. That support has to extend years beyond, you know, years after taking the Shahada. We tend to think that the challenges and issues and trials that befall a revert is only when you know is only during the first few years of being a Muslim when actually those challenges can manifest many 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 years down the line and so I want the community to know that da'wah calling a person a man or a woman to Islam is a noble deed taking that person through the shahada is a noble deed but supporting that person in the days weeks months and years beyond their shahada is what is needed. When we think about the early new Muslims that came to Islam and the support that they received from the Ansar, this is what is needed within the Muslim community. Support is required way beyond the shahada. I am taking part in this series as the founder and CEO of Solace UK also as a revert, as a revert who has gone through difficulties, who found herself homeless, who found herself, you know, crying because she was so lonely, who found herself confused with so many questions about Islam, who found herself in a state where her heart was in a state of so much pain because of the early challenges that she went through at such a young age and who tried her best to hold on to her faith, but didn't have the support around her to do so as she navigated those challenges. I am taking part in this series to highlight the fact that reverts need support way beyond the Shahada. Awareness is required, and after that awareness, support through volunteering, through donations, through being that actual support for a fellow revert. That's why I'm doing this series. I work with a fantastic team of women who know firsthand what it means to struggle as a woman who has embraced Islam. We are a team who are majority reverts and so we have you know first-hand experience of the challenges and difficulties that our beneficiaries and service users bring when they apply to Solace for support. Alhamdulillah, the Board of Trustees 
um, have been Muslim for a very, very long time, due to the fact that we are, as a majority, reverts, and we have, you know, gone through, you know, some of the challenges that our beneficiaries experience, we are not a board that just sit, you know, in a boardroom that are disconnected from the reality on the ground. No, rather, we understand, we're compassionate, and we aim to ensure that that compassion and understanding filters out to our entire team and then to those who need the support. And I think that's what makes Solace um, very unique. As I founded the charity and I am the CEO of the charity, uh, I may seem biased, but I believe that Solace is a very unique charity. We want to ensure that every single woman who becomes Muslim enjoys her faith, thrives in her chosen faith and enjoys life supported by those who are meant to support her, the Muslim community. And I'm very, very passionate about what we do. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to bless us and to continue to direct the community to support us so that we can support our fellow revert sisters in difficulty.